Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. On this episode, I'm going to be talking about the draw. Now the draw is pretty much the same no matter where you're drawing from, whether or not it be a competition holster, a duty holster, or even a concealed carry, with maybe some minor steps. But today we're going to just be talking about drawing from a open style or a regular carry holster um, with not a lot of retention on it so you don't have to manipulate anything externally from it. When I teach my draw, I teach it in a four-step method, and very uh, very simple. The reason why I do four steps is because the last two steps that um, of my draw also translate into my reloads, um, which we'll be doing uh, in a later episode. However, uh, for the sake of this one, we're going to show we have an empty firearm, no mag in the chamber, or no mag in the gun, and no rounds in the chamber. Click it, and we're back down in the holster. So, first thing I want to talk about is establishing your grip on the firearm. It doesn't necessarily matter how fast you get your hand to the gun, okay? We're talking about hundreds of a second, and while hundreds do add up to tenths, which add up to seconds, um, establishing your grip on your firearm is absolutely the most essential part of any aspect when it comes to shooting. Because if you don't have a good solid grip, the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the shots and everything that proceeds afterwards is going to be slower, probably a little bit less accurate, and eventually at some point, you're gonna actually have to reestablish uh, and, and re-grip your gun to get a good proper grip on the gun, okay? So the important thing to remember when you're establishing your grip is to not rush it. It is very, very important. Take an extra couple hundredths of a second to make sure that your hand is getting exactly on the gun where it needs to be, okay? That's absolutely vital that you establish a good solid grip on the gun. So step one is obviously just getting your grip on the gun. Now, when I'm doing my dry fire drills, I'll actually do several repetitions, anywhere from 10 to 20, of gripping the gun from both standard positions that we do in the competition shooting world. And that's gonna be the hands relaxed at sides and then the wrists above shoulders. Now, like I said, establishing your grip is obviously the most important aspect of drawing the firearm. So what I will do for the first step of my dry fire, uh, dry fire routines will be 20, anywhere from 10 to 20 reps of just establishing my grip from both positions, okay? So the first position we'll do it will be hands relaxed to sides, and what we'll do is just go one, two, three. And we'll continue to do that for 10 to 20 reps, and then we'll proceed to put the wrist above shoulders. One, two, three. And do that again for anywhere from 10 to 20, depending on how well you're doing it. Now, if you do happen to mess up your grip, you come down on top of the gun, you're grabbing the beaver tail, you're grabbing the slide, you're coming down too slow, or you're, you're coming down too far, and you're not actually getting a nice high grip on the gun, but your hand's coming down too low on the gun, well, you need to stop, and you need to reevaluate what it is that went wrong on that specific rep, and then fix it for, uh, and, and in my case, I'll actually start back over at one, because I'm not about, I'm, it's not about trying to get the reps done, okay? It's not like you're just trying to, to, to get them done so that you can say, oh yeah, I dry fired. No, if you're gonna do it, make sure you do it right, okay? So, like I said, we're gonna do 10 reps of each uh, hand position, getting the hand to the gun. That's just gonna be step one. Step two for me, oh, at the same time, I uh, didn't, didn't discuss this earlier. When one hand's moving, the other hand will tend to wants to move anyway. So the move that is mostly taught majority around the world probably, is that with your, uh, with your left hand, or whichever is your support hand, um, what you're gonna do during the draw is to bring it into your body somewhere. I don't care if your hand's flat, don't care if you make a fist, chest, stomach, however you'd like. I tend to just kind of put it right here in like the solar plex area, right where the, the rib cages meet up to your sternum. Um, that tends to be kind of where my hand comes to. That's several, there's several reasons I wanna do that. The first is that eventually this hand is going to get on the gun. So now I'm getting the, gun, uh, getting the hand closer to where the gun is going to be so there's less movement. The second thing, and probably the more important thing, is that it gets the hand out of the way, okay? When your hand is close into your body, there's no possible way for you to sweep your hand accidentally and be sent home for a safety infraction. So, step one is going to be establishing your grip and also bringing the support hand in close to your body to get it prepared for what is going to be step three, okay? Now, obviously we can't get to step three without step two. In my case, for my draw, my step two is going to be getting the gun out of the holster and actually rocking it forward, okay? The reason I emphasize the rock forward as opposed to just getting the gun out of the holster and then the next step being pushing the gun forward and doing the meet and greet is that the purpose is I don't want 
to accidentally sweep myself. I don't want my, my, my gun to get caught up in my holster, my hand already be waiting for the gun, and when I come up, I end up sweeping myself because in the competition world, that's where you get sent home for safety, uh, safety infractions. And in the real world, one of the firearms rules, uh, one of the firearm rules, uh, one of the firearm safety rules is to not point the gun at anything you don't will, you're not willing to crush, kill, and destroy. And in my case, I kind of like my hand, and I don't necessarily like sweeping it. Uh, even just then, even though I know this gun is empty, that was actually kind of a little uncomfortable for me. So, step two is going to be, once we've established our grip, which is step one, step two is just getting the gun out of the holster and rocking it forward, okay? This is just, like I said, to overemphasize the fact that I want to get the muzzle pointed at my target and downrange before anything else in my body can get in front of the muzzle. Once I've rocked it forward, if my hand, my support hand is already up here in my chest, the gun is already ahead of me. The only way I can get this muzzle to point at my hand is I have to reach around and grab for the gun, which is not going to happen, okay? So, again, step one, we're talking about establishing a good solid grip. Step two is going to be pulling the gun out and rocking it forward, okay? Again, that's just to overemphasize the safety aspect. I want to get this gun up and out and pointed towards whatever it is that I'm getting ready to engage. Doesn't matter if this is a self-defense situation. Doesn't matter if this is a competition side self uh, situation. I just want the gun up and towards a target, okay? So that's gonna be step two. For dry fire routines, this one eh, might not necessarily be necessary to perform reps of 10 to 20 from each position because it's fairly simple. However, what you'll find is that step two and step three start to kind of morph into one step. Um, eventually once you start to pick up speed. So step three is going to be the meet and greet. That's going to be the point where your support hand is coming up and meeting the gun, okay, and getting ready to establish the rest of your grip. Now, when I do my meet and greet, important things to remember is I want my knuckles of my support hand to come up nice and tight under the trigger guard and where the trigger guard meets um, the middle finger of your strong hand. Okay, you don't necessarily want it to come up over the over the front of the uh, trigger guard. I guess in my grip, unless you're someone like Eric Grafell, uh, which tends to do the uh, the trigger finger over the the front strap or the uh, the front part of the trigger guard. Um, I will take my fingers and I will meet them and greet them together where the middle finger is touching the bottom of the trigger guard. That's where I want the knuckles of my support hand to come in. At this point, I'm starting to bring the gun up into my field of view which is obviously starting to, is already looking at my target so that I can start to get my sights up onto the target and start to acquire them as I'm pushing the gun out. As I'm pushing the gun out, what you'll notice about my hand is, again, I've started at kind of an angle away from the gun. And the reason is I wanna be able to cinch these fingers as tightly as I can into one another and under the gun so that I could begin to roll my grip and establish the rest of the grip on my firearm, okay? So again, uh, as, the, as the hands meet and greet together, they're coming out at a little awkward angle outwards, and then as I push the gun out, I'm gonna roll my hand into the grip so that I can establish the rest of the, uh, of the uh, 360 grip that I want on my firearm. Now, important thing to remember when it comes to meeting the support hand onto the grip of the firearm. Energy, will always want to travel in the least, uh, the path of least resistance, okay? So, how are we going to find that path? Well, anyone that's ever shot strong hand weak hand or strong hand support hand, however you want to say it, will notice something. And that is, if I'm shooting strong hand only, and I pull the trigger and the shot breaks, what tends to happen to my gun? Well, from my perspective, it goes up and to the left. So from your perspective, it's going to be going up and right right now, okay? Now, why is it going up and left? Well, it's simple. I have nothing supporting the left side of the gun here. Energy is taking the path of least resistance, which is coming to the left because there's nothing resisting it. My, on the right hand, on the right side of the gun, my right hand is on it and it's maintaining its grip. Okay? Same thing when you're shooting support hand only. If I were to shoot and break a shot right now, the gun would go, from my perspective, up and to the right because there is nothing supporting the right side of the gun. So, uh, path of least resistance, very simple. How do you fix that? You fix it by establishing a full 360 grip around the gun to help manage your recoil. So now, the only energy 
that is necessarily going to be a, a, a factor here is going to be the energy of the gun flipping up. Now, if you have your grip established correctly, what you will see is that the gun, through recoil, should flip straight up and then straight back down. Again, I've created a 360 grip around the gun. I'm establishing a grip, I'm establishing my angles and my pressures exactly how I want it to be, so that the only thing that happens is as the slide reciprocates over my hands, that movement is a straight back movement. Now, because it's over, the, uh, the angle is over my hand, obviously, or else the slide would be going into my hand, um, there is some torque. And what causes recoil and muzzle flip is the torque from the slide reciprocating back and forth or from the energy exp expelling out the front and coming out for those that shoot revolvers or anything like that. So the importance of having a good solid grip is the fact that you will be able to manage that recoil. You'll be able to manage that reciprocating uh, mass so that when your shot breaks, your gun recoils straight up and then straight back down as you drive the gun back to your target and you set up for your next follow-up shot. Okay, so the way we establish that is also in the meet and greet in the presentation. As we're rolling the gun, uh, as, we run, or as we're pushing the gun out and we're rolling our grip in, we're establishing that 360. So all of this part of the grip of your firearm that is not covered by anything needs to be covered by the meaty part of your hand. Okay, so as we're uh, establishing the grip and pushing out, that's exactly what my hands are doing. I'm establishing it so that I have a complete 360 degree grip around the firearm. There's no part of the grip that you can see as I'm actively shooting. As far as pressures go, some people say it's best to shoot 60-40 or 70-30 as far as the grip pressures. Some people say push-pull. I'll tell you what I do, and that is that I grip the snot out of the gun. It doesn't matter which hand has more pressure or less pressure. I want both hands gripping the gun. So I tend to do about yeah, 100%, 100% on both grips, okay? Now, when, I talk, when we're talking about uh, actual the pressures of the gun that we're doing, what we want to do is be squeezing the fingers to the palms in a squeezing motion like this. And same thing with your support hand. The pressure is going to create a perfect X over the top of the firearm. So as I establish my strong hand grip, I'm pushing my fingers in towards my palms at that angle. And then once I establish my support hand, that grip is going in at this angle with my fingers pushing into my hand and then going in towards my palms, okay? So what I'm doing there is I'm completing a complete X, again, doing a full 360, and by putting those cross pressures on, what I've done is eliminated any chance of a right or left side recoil but making the gun recoil straight up and straight back down where I want it to be, okay? Step four of the draw is really quite simple, and that's going to be the finish and the follow-through, which is going to be as your hands are meeting and greeting, you're starting to push the gun out. You're, uh, you're transitioning your focus from the target to your front sight, and as you're doing this, you're putting your finger on the trigger, prepping it, and as soon as your sights are on target, you're breaking the shot, okay? So... We're gonna do this once, or uh, probably a couple times. Let's do it a couple times for you. So, first step, establishing your grip nice and high as we wanna get up on as high as we can on that gun to help manage the recoil from the reciprocating slide, okay? So step one, we're, we're establishing the grip and we're bringing the support hand up to the body. So step one. Step two is going to be drawing the gun and rocking it forward. So two. Three is the meet and greet and starting to bring the gun up into our sight pictures or into our, our, our workspace, and then four is going to be uh, clipping off the safety, prep, putting your finger on the trigger, prepping it, and as soon as your sights are on target and you're on your focus, breaking your shot off, okay? Again, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now let's start doing it a little bit faster. One, two, three, four. A little faster. One, two, three, four. Okay. So after you've completed those repetitions and seen what you need to see and feel what you need to feel visually, now we're going to start speeding up. 
The important thing to remember about these repetitions and the fact of dry fire, again, we're not trying to instill bad habits here. We want to do it right. We want to do it proper because what translates here is going to happen out on the range. So if you're constantly getting a bad grip on the gun or you're constantly not doing the meet and greet properly, when you go out to the range to do your live fire drills, you're still going to run into those issues. Okay. So the important thing when we're coming to dry fire again is if you make a mistake, stop, fix the mistake, figure out what it is that you did, fix it, and then begin the repetitions over. Dry fire is not necessarily fun. You can make it fun with things like the cert pistols and, and uh, CO2 guns or airsoft and stuff like that. Absolutely, you can. But when it all comes down to it, you're not at the range sending bullets down, uh, sending lead down range, right? So dry fire is going to be dry fire, which is dry, not, not fun. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now we've gotten to that aspect where, okay, we're starting to feel the flow. Now all we just need to do is not burp, uh, set up a part timer uh, with a delay, obviously, if you're by yourself or if you got a training buddy that, uh, that does the dry fire training with you, which is a great way uh, to break the monotony of dry fire training is to have a training buddy with you um go ahead and set a part timer and start at a very reasonable pace the beginner shooter a, a two second draw is perfectly fine okay and as you start to advance so you start to get more comfortable then we can start bringing that part time down and start setting it to some some aspects where you start getting a little uncomfortable with your uh comfort zone okay uh, if you've constantly done a 1.5 draw from the start of your shooting career, if for whatever reason you just you've just always had a good solid draw, and you've done a 1.5, you were able to on the timer get the gun up, present it to the target, and break your shot off in 1.5 seconds. That's a good solid time. But we want to try and push ourselves, right? We're talking about some of the best guys in the world, people like KCU CBO and Max Michelle, that at Steel Challenge can break like a 0.98 a point, uh, even point eight sometimes on steel targets, you know, whether or not they're 18 by 24s on smoke and hope or something like roundabout where you're starting on like a 10 inch plate at like 12 yards or something like that. Um, they're, they're still able to get those draws sub second. And in a game like uh, uh, steel challenge, those tenths of seconds do count. So pull yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. Again, we're doing dry fire. So it's not like anything necessarily terrible can happen. I mean, it can if you do stuff wrong, like, you know, train in the room that has ammo and you accidentally put one in the, in the mag or whatever reason. But um, for the sake of that, when, you're, when we're doing tri-fire training, go ahead and try and push yourself out of that comfort zone. If you're constantly doing a 1.5 and you know you can nail a 1.5 consistently, that's always there. But see what it feels like to try and get like a 1.2 or a second flat or even sub-second once you start getting to that, that level of of feeling the uh, the smoothness of your draw and you start to kind of make everything more fluid and then you start making it fluid and explosive so that you can get your gun up out of the holster um, in those times, okay? So don't be afraid of pushing yourself outside of your comfort limits when it comes to your draw. Again, the biggest thing to remember, no matter how fast you want your draw to be, the rest of the stage is dependent upon getting a solid grip, okay? So do not rush the grip aspect of it. All of the speed happens afterwards, okay? The speed of getting your hand to your gun, okay, might shave off 100s, 200s, or something like that. But establishing a bad grip to try and shave off two, ten, or two one hundredths of a second is going to be negated with a bad grip that then costs you a half a second to re-grip and establish or, and then to fix it, okay? So don't try and save a hundredth and potentially give up a couple tenths. So again, once we've gotten the, the aspect of the, the fluid of the motions and, and you know your body's working where it needs to, it's establishing the grip exactly where it needs to, it's presenting the gun, you're seeing your sight picture as you prep your trigger, and as soon as your sight picture is there, you're already squeezing. Once we get that aspect, now we're gonna pull out the part-timer and we're going to start setting some goals, setting some benchmarks, and then trying to push those benchmarks to the next level, okay? 
So um, I actually left my timer in the other room, so I'm gonna have to go grab those, or go grab it in a second. All right, so I got my trusty part timer now. Um, I have the delay set to random, and I have my part time set to 1.5, okay? So one of the other aspects that I wanna talk about real quick with the draw is that you need to be relaxed. Your body should be relaxed. At no point should your, should your shoulders be tensed up, your arms be tensed up, nothing like that. If you ever look at a sprinter, and he's getting ready to launch off the blocks during a race, they don't have every muscle in their body flexed, okay? They have to be relaxed. Relaxed muscles are smooth muscles that make it a whole lot easier to do some work initially, okay? Especially when it comes to things like being explosive, okay? So the important thing to remember when you're doing the draw, take a deep breath and relax, okay? Wait for the timer to come off. The timer is not something to be feared. I'm doing some little man on fire stuff. It's not supposed to be feared, okay? It frees you off the block. It frees you off the starting position. It tells you, get your gun out and do some work. So when it comes to uh, preparing to do a stage, make sure you're nice and relaxed, okay? I guarantee you if you're relaxed, everything can go a whole lot smoother than when you're super tense and tight and nervous and anxious and just take a breath relax let it flow from you okay um typically what i do uh, if you if you ever listen to some of my videos and the reason i say listen is because that's really the only way you can hear it is that as the as the, as the ro says are you ready stand by when they give me the standby command i'm actually exhaling my last deep breath so are you ready stand by and i'm relaxing i'm trying to let everything relax so that when the timer goes off um, I'm able to perform nice and smooth. Okay, so like I said, we've got the uh, part timer set for random here, or we've got the delay set to random and part timer set to 1.5. So this is what 1.5 looks like. Okay, so I was obviously well under that. Let's do it again. I just slow that one down a little bit. Okay, so that's hands and sides. Now we're gonna do wrist above shoulders. A little high. Okay, so 1.5, pretty consistent, pretty easy to do. Now we're going to go ahead and drop that part time down. Let's go ahead and do a 1.2. This is what 1.2 sounds like. Okay. Good. Hands relaxed. And this above. Still plenty of time, okay? Push this down to one second flat. And just above. Okay, so I'm still coming in right around that time. And obviously now, and, and one second for me is pretty much the, the fastest that I'll get even in a competition setting, okay? Um, just me personally, once I start pushing any further than this is when I start uh, trying to get lucky. And anyone that's ever been gambling with me knows that <laughs> I'm not lucky. So, all right, so now we're at 0.9. All right, hands relaxed. Okay. Still coming in pretty solid, so let's go ahead and push it to point eight. Now you can see that I was twitching a little bit there, I'm starting to anticipate, because I, I know at this point I'm, I'm starting to get pretty desperate for making it. So let's try that again this time. Relax. Okay, at 
0.7, not the, it's gonna be, <laughs> it's pretty fast here, let's see. It's just pretty much, it's like the beep, and then a tenth of a second pause, and then the beep again, so. Alright, here we go, 0. 0.7. Alright, so obviously point past that, now you're just getting the circus tricks, and even at that point you're still probably talking about circus tricks, I'm sure you can see the muzzle of my gun was probably in a little different area uh, if you were a full-size ipsic target. I probably still would have gotten a hit 90% of those times, okay? But um, the fact that I want to discuss here again or to elaborate on is don't be afraid to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Nothing great ever happened in your comfort zone, okay? Anyone that's ever done anything great had to at one point say, I'm tired of doing it this way. I need to, uh, I need to see if I can go faster. Can I go further? Can I go harder, okay? Don't be afraid to push yourself out of your comfort zone, especially when it comes to dry fire, because you never know unless you try. All right. So again, going over the aspects of the draw, like we said, step one is establishing a good solid grip. At no point in during any of those dry fires did I get a bad grip on the gun. My hand went exactly where it needed to be and proceeded to, to again, which facilitated a smooth execution of the rest of the draw so that I could get some of those uh, you know, the 0 0.7, 0 0.8 draws down. It's all based on the grip. If I had had a bad grip, you would have noticed it right away because the gun would have came out of my holster uh, wrong. My, my hand probably wouldn't have been, been doing some sort of fidgeting or something like that. I would have lost precious time that when you're talking about tenths of a second for the draw can add up, especially if you're shooting three day long match, you're shooting 15 stages, okay? Every time you add a tenth of a second to your draw, you're adding time throughout the entire match because you're not just doing one draw you're doing 15 okay so a good solid 1.5 will beat and, and as, as far as a shooter goes a good solid you know 1.5 1.2 anywhere in between there will beat someone that can can go with one second and then on five of the stages ends up with a two second draw because they missed the grip okay so don't be afraid to push yourself out of your comfort zone but at the same time once you're at the match Get back into that comfort zone because you're not supposed to be necessarily shooting at 100% when you're during uh, when you're in a competition setting. Okay, when you start pushing to 100%, it's very easy to go one on one, and that's where you start making misses. You start pulling off the targets before you're supposed to. Um, anyone that watched Three Gun Nation this year or, or watched the live stream or anything like that knows that uh, on my first eliminator stage that I got sent to. Um, I had to go up against Jerry Michalek shooting a pistol. That's right. I've been, I had to shoot a pistol against a guy who's been winning matches with the pistol since before I was born. Needless to say, he got to set the pace and he shot 14 plates in 16, or with 16 shots in 5.47 seconds. So I knew I had to push the envelope and at that speed, I had to go and try and do my 100%. Um, however... Halfway through the array, I pushed over to 101 and started pulling off and missing a huge Colt steel popper, okay, because I was pushing myself to that 101 aspect and not doing everything the way I know, uh, at a comfortable speed for me where I know I can get my hits. I had to push it a little bit harder, okay? So, again, when you're at the match, you might actually want to stay consistently around the 85-90% of what you know you're capable of doing because when it comes to a big match, like it's over multiple days, consistency is king, okay? Someone that places first, and then places 50th, and then places 5th, and then places 30th, and then places 2nd, and then places... They end up like 15th to, to the 10th area, okay? Whereas the people that are going to consistently place in the top 10 have a 3rd place, a 5th place, 2nd place, a 10th place, a 7th place, a 4th place, okay? It's about consistency. It's about staying in that top bracket because... Once you come around to the last day, the people that are going to be at the top, I guarantee you, are the people that have the most consistent matches, okay? So don't be afraid of pushing your limits when you're doing dry fire. Don't be afraid of pushing your limits when you're training. And then when you get to the match, 
Now it's time to know your limits and to come in a little bit under them so that you don't try and overstride and start, uh, start hoping that you just might get lucky that one time, okay? Because a lot of times, again, in my case, I'm the unluckiest Asian that I know here in Las Vegas. It doesn't work out for me. So anyway, I hope you guys found this video uh, somewhat informative and somewhat enjoyable. If not, sorry I wasted your time, but um, yeah, if it makes you feel better, I'm going to be releasing more and more of these, talking about stuff like the reload and stuff, so I can waste more of your time that way. So anyway, uh, I'm John McLean. Uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure you subscribe. Uh, hit, the, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'll also have some links to some of the gear that I'm using um, down in the what is it called? The description box or something. Yes. So, um, again, stay safe. Okay. Stay safe. Shoot straight. I'll see you guys out on the range.